one? Okay, it's a spooky one. If you don't like gore, look away now. Look at these. I'm gonna show you how I created these, okay? This is more about Halloween than it is nail art, but I did do some nail stuff, so, you know. Excuse the really nice tablecloth in the kitchen. This is my uh, extra coarse smooth top drill bit from Glitter Planet UK. I have 10% off. I basically roughed up my nails. They're due an infill and a redesign. Actually, I'm gonna just soak off and start again. So I basically roughed them up. Look at this, it just cuts through so quick. And then I started taking chunks out, literally just attacking it with my file. Um, I use this, which actually came in my uh, file pack, which my file is from Femme Fatale Nails. If I remember, I'll put the link in the description box below, but I do have an unboxing video, which I'll link as well. It's an awesome file. And I just literally use that bit to make the holes here and also to take chunks out of the nails as well. And I'm checking that my fake barbed wire, which is not barbed wire, it is string. I got it on Amazon for like a couple of quid. Um, so I'm literally using this piece to kind of wreck the nails. I mean, it was strangely satisfying. I really enjoyed it. Maybe I should just do like weird stuff from now on because this was really fun. And if it's not your cup of tea, I apologize. Please don't feel you've got to watch, okay? <laughs> I showed each one of my older kids. They are like young adults, sort of ranging from 16 to 18. And, and they were like, oh, it's making my knees go funny, mum. Oh, and also, hello to my new subscribers who have come from Instagram. Hi. Um, I'm not quite sure what happened, but I, I uploaded an Instagram video yesterday and it's at 80,000 views. And uh, yeah, hi to you guys. Thank you for that. That blew my tiny brain. Okay, so this is what my nails look like now. Do you like my kitchen roll? This is the stuff, this is the string that looks like rusty barbed wire. It's soft, it's gentle, it's not sharp in any way, shape or form. If I can find the link, I will get it for you and put it in the description box below. I'm using just cotton pads torn up. This is such a weird video to do for you guys. Fake skin, basically latex. So obviously if you have a latex allergy, do not use it, find something else. And scab blood, this stuff is a must. You need scab blood. I think that was about five pounds for that little pot. Lots of different sponge, it's just a kitchen sponge, clean, and some cheap acrylic paints. Yep, that's it. Okay, so first I did start using my finger to dab on the latex. Now the key here is work in layers and dry it fully before you go to the next layer. So initially I was using my finger to dab it on, but I did turn over and use a sponge after this layer. So I'm just placing the latex in the areas where I know I'm going to want skin damage. That's basically all it is. So I'm patting it in and then I'm gonna let it use the hairdryer to dry it off. So yeah, I did use the sponge after this because it actually started dripping. As you can see, it was pooling. So I did, I dried this first layer, but it took me ages. Sorry that the white balance is off on this. It is better after this. I don't know why it just kind of really glared out there. So in my head, I've kind of mapped this out as to where I'm going to want the barbed wire to go, where I'm going to want the damaged skin to go. And um, there's my daughter's hair dryer that I stole. And as you can see, where it pulled, it was taking longer to dry and it kind of looked like pus. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to show you how gross this was, but it was sticky and uh, yucky. But that means it's not quite fully dry. You see, it's like gooey. Whereas when it's dry, it goes completely clear like that. That one was especially boil looking. <laughs> anyway. I keep adding layers and I will speed part of this up otherwise this video probably would have been about an hour long but I think around now I revert to a sponge I'm like oh for goodness sake there you go and I get the sponge and it works fantastically well it distributes it a lot more evenly obviously I've never done this before I had a play with it the other day at home um, I didn't get this far obviously but um, this is a first for me and I'm, it was so much fun you've got to try it freaks everyone out like everyone I showed was just like <laughs> so I'm just gonna keep adding to these layers 
I will speed the video up so you're not completely bored. Um, but I'm going to add, add a few layers of just the latex and dry each layer with the hairdryer on just a lukewarm or cool setting. Um, the first time I turned the hairdryer on it blew all the sponges and everything off of my table and I was like sat there with latex dripping up my arm like oh my goodness. But yes. So I'm just patting it in, it doesn't matter if it goes on the nail. The more weird it looks, the better. You're basically just making some layers of fake skin so that you can start to distress the skin and make it look wounded. And that's the whole process. And it's just to let you know, if you've never worked with latex before, it does stink, all right? It's gross. Just gonna put that out there as well. <laughs> it really pongs. I'm sorry, I went out of shot there. There we go, I'm back in again. Okay, so that layer's dry. And I'm just gonna start sort of playing with it and loosening it in areas where I know I'm gonna want it to lift. So I'm just using my pound shop cuticle tool because it's blunt, it's not like sharp, it's not like a proper cuticle knife. It's just not. But I mean, it's my trusty fave. I love it. Oh, my hands were sticking to my fingers were sticking together, it was gross. So that's where I'm going to be lifting one area. It's really good stuff, this is. I was a bit dubious, I bought it from all from Amazon and I really didn't know if it was going to be any good. But it was really good. So I'm going to start adding super thin layers of the uh, cotton wool and you need to work thin because otherwise it just won't dry and it won't have any rigidity to it. So I'm just adding tiny pieces and I'll dip them a little bit in the latex or I'll just place them on the sticky area and then I'll use either my finger or my sponge to pat it down and just blend the edges in. I mean, at the end of the day, this hand is going to have been dragged through a graveyard and barbed wire fence. So it's going to look riggedy, jaggedy, riggedy isn't even a word sort of jagged distressed sorry about whacking the camera so it's um it's okay if it's not perfect maybe that's why i like it because i can just be messy so i'm just kind of like making sure it goes far enough up so that i can pull it back down again just finely breaking up that cotton wool and just shoving it right up under the nail there. Because I'm gonna get the fake happening you. <sighs> so I start speeding this up now because this, this is time consuming. I think this whole thing took me a couple of hours to be fair. It's no different to a set of nails I suppose and so worth it. So here we go, I've sped up now. So I'm just sticking it down and then smudging it around because we're gonna get, we're gonna be stabbing the epinicium, the hypernicium, the side of the hand, we're gonna be stabbing it all. So I'm only going to do this on the areas that I want to distress later on. On the rest of it, I just kind of add random pieces and let them soak in just so the hand... And there is it dry. You see it's changed colour? So that's when you know it's dry. It's gone from white to kind of like a gross colour, actually. This is what I'm doing with my pads. I'm just tearing, the, tearing them open down the middle and then fraying it all apart. And I'm going to continue to add these layers until it's thick enough for me to really because obviously the string's quite weighty, so I need it to be thick enough, sorry, it's my stool, thick enough for me to hold that string in place. And also for me to really look, make it look like these fingers have been ripped apart by barbed wire. You know, it's no fun having your hand ripped apart.
My favourite bit of doing this video actually has to be the scab blood at the end. It's just the most amazing stuff I've ever used. I suppose I should issue a warning not to do that with your real nails, by the way, what I did with the e -fart. It's probably a bit late now. You might have already done it. If you have, you're really silly. No, I'm joking. It's, it's yeah, that was, they were extensions. They can be messed about with. So that's that layer dry. Now, if you're going to get grossed out, just look away, because it's going to look like I'm stabbing myself. But I'm starting to make gaps and line up the products and get everything where I need it to be. So it's going to look like I'm hurting myself. I can assure you, none of this hurts. Even when I go at my fake skin with a blunt pair of cuticle nippers, it did not hurt. <laughs> it's just like making the gaps wide enough and sliding the instruments underneath so that I can measure how much I need to get the string in there. And then I'm just looking for any opportunity to pierce it, to rip it, to make wounds, holes, gashes. It's pretty cool. It's a ton of fun. So, I mean, this stuff sticks. I can't fault the, the liquid latex. I wondered, I, don't, I think it was probably about, it might have been seven, eight pounds, maybe a little bit more. It wasn't. And I thought, well, I'm not going to buy the cheapest. I'll buy something that's a little bit more pricey because I want it to be good. And it is really good. I can't fault it. And the delivery was just a couple of days. So, I mean, there's a chance you might be able to get it there for Halloween. Hopefully. Especially if you've got a party like next weekend. I promise you this didn't hurt. I've just got wrinkly hands. <laughs> but I'm sorry if I went out of shot here then. This was quite difficult to film. <laughs> If you can see the state of my nails, I started taking the gems off and just removing the nails, so that's why they look a bit raggedy. I don't know what to do for my next set, actually. Just got some more colours from Glam and Glitz and some more colours from Glitz Bells as well. I'm so confused. Ooh, holy, holy. Oh, holy nails. Should be holy hands, actually, shouldn't it? Look, I'm, this did not hurt, can I, I can just assure you of that, it's just the latex is sticky and these are so blunt. There you go, got in there, I'm just going to rip it open and create a wound. There you go, peel back skin and gaping wounds and gross stuff. All the good stuff in life. Right. So now, I'm going to start uh, positioning the fake barbed wire. So I'm looking into where I want things to go. Do I want which bit do I want going where? I knew I couldn't fit both those bits through the nail. Um, so I kind of wanted it to look like it had literally just, I'd gone so hard through it, it had torn, ripped the barbed wire apart and it had gone under my skin and oh, yeah, I don't like good stuff. At one point, I think I just opted for tweezers and like feeding things in and out of the fake skin. I mean, it stayed really well. The trick is thin layers and a hairdryer. That's the key. And gravity. Work with gravity. Work with forces. Think about it scientifically. You know, you're not going to get something purely to hang upside down unless you wedge it in loads. Whereas if something is wrapped around and it's pushing at it from both angles, it's going to hold itself in place. I'm terrible at explaining things. I hope you can see by this one. It's buried quite deep in there. And then it wraps around and goes under. So it's holding itself in. You see what I mean? I mean, I'm only an amateur, but this I've never tried sort of special effects stuff like this before so I've just kind of tried to apply a little bit of logic which is difficult for me so you know my head hurts now
I was getting really frustrated because it's string, it doesn't have the rigidity, does it? So I was like, grrr, trying to push that in there. So then I just opted for kind of trying to snip it, but even the blunt cuticle nippers were having trouble. So in the end, I decided to go for this bigger hole here and then actually use some tweezers to pull it out the other side so it looked like it had gone straight under the skin and kind of poked straight back out again, which I preferred. I thought it was extra gross. Just here, look, so I'm feeding it through the skin there. This sounds so weird saying this for a tutorial. I really hope you're not all disgusted in me. I just think it's quite quirky and weird, like me. Now I'm just trying to balance it all in there while I pull them out enough and, and I'm happy with them. And here, I went out of shot for a bit there. So this is going through the, the next nail and then under the skin again. So it kind of all holds itself in place. That's what we want. So now I'm going to get my foundation, just normal foundation. I think it's uh, Maybelline Fit Me. Uh, in colour 115. There you go. And I'm just gonna use that on the latex to make it look like my skin colour. I'm gonna do that on a whole hand underneath everything. And then I'm using these acrylic paints. They're actually my husband's, but I'm borrowing them. I only need a little bit. And I'm just mixing some brown and some kind of mustard baby poop colour to make kind of grubby, dirty... You want multi-textured. It's going to go in and out of all the dents. It's going to give depth. You want it to look like you've smudged your hand through mud and goodness knows what else. And don't forget the nails as well, okay? The nails are ripped up because they've been dragged through the earth and the, the fence. So we need to distress the nails as well. We need to distress the barbed wire as well because that's not, you know, that's old, that's manky. It's gonna have your blood and mud and dirt all over it. So the idea is to give more depth, discoloration and distress to the hand. And I even did it on my wedding ring and engagement ring and my husband was mortified. It came out, it's all water-based, just washed out. Probably not a good look if it's gonna rain. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> You would use oil-based paints if you were going to be doing this in a wet environment, I presume. I just used what I had at home. And I'm just building up layers. Layers of dark, then red, then the baby poop colour, then dark, then the red. And just kind of making it look inflamed and sore and like there's dried blood and new blood and smears and smudges and mud and dirt all that good stuff and you can't see because it's out of shot oh my god i'm annoying myself now because i can't see what i'm doing and not forgetting the areas where there's no wounds as well this is my favorite bit the scab blood this stuff is amazing it's kind of like congealed blood but you can smush it like a smear but it stays shiny and does not dry it stays shiny like blood you know that that kind of glistening, congealed look. It's really good stuff. And what you want to do is anywhere you've got gaps, areas where things have penetrated, you just build it up like a wound. Cracks, look at the cracks in the knuckles. There's going to have, blood would naturally gather. If, if you had a wound, blood would gather in crevices. So that's where you stick it. You stick it in the crevices, in the lower lying areas, around the places of impact, on the ends, of the barbed wire in case it's like stab the skin and then come back off. Just anywhere, just stick it in. Everywhere. Just get the stuff everywhere. Get it all on there. This was one of my favourites actually, going under the... <laughs> under there, filling it up with... Sorry, I had a big yawn. I've been busy today. getting right in there see and where it looks congealed and shiny it just so real 
It's so realistic. Scab blood is amazing. I used to watch Glam and Gore on here and I was just absolutely obsessed with her. And that's what that's how I found out that scab blood even existed. And I've put some inside the skin there that was just naturally lifting up, the fake skin. So I've put that in there because you know that's another opportunity to add a wound. Anywhere where the the cotton wool has gone crumbly and you know anything like that is an opportunity to add an extra wound and it's just naturally done it by the hand moving this was definitely my favorite part so I'm going to continue to add the scab blood into the wounds under the skin in all the crevices and here we are this is the final disgusting, revolting look. I really hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you share it with all your friends because it was really messy to clean up and I'd appreciate your love. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Goodbye.